we are engaged in governance, we are engaged in solving problems, mm. we are engaged in meeting the community. Nanado Danko Kufuardo has gone all over the country, region by region, still seeing people, still meeting problems, appreciating that it's enormous problems that we're going to face. These are some of the challenges. Of course, so far we've tried to solve them. That can be solved easily. Solve them, that can be solved within a very short time. Still we are going ahead. Okay. Still we are struggling with the economy. Still uh, people's problems and so forth and so on haven't ended. Many more are coming. But as I said, it's challenging and we are overcoming them. Okay. But we are happy if we go around or if you as an individual move around the country and uh, ask questions, look at people's faces, interact with them. What they tell you, there is a feeling of satisfaction mm -hmm. that you are performing. Okay. Ghanaians, I believe, are happy with what we are doing so far. Okay. You don't get a feeling that it is mixed. There are some who say that, yes, they are very happy that the NPP is finally in power because they were not happy under the previous administration. There are some who say that uh, they voted overwhelmingly for the New Patriotic Party because uh, you promised to create jobs for them. It's been 10 months. Um, they are yet to see their realization of some of these promises. What do you say to them? I don't know what to say to them. As you said, the question is, you don't think that some people are saying so. Why not? I believe even in heaven there will be opposition. There will be some people who will not be satisfied. Uh, quite a sizable chunk of people might not have voted for MPP. This kind of, or this group of people will not be very happy with the government, no matter what you do. In some cases, but for those who voted for you, but and for I those expecting who voted the factories and the jobs. At the moment, uh, some of them, their expectation might not immediately have been met. It's not a magic wand. It's it's hard work. You work at it over time. When an economy has taken about eight years to get messed up, and you want to repair, you want to fix it. You don't just buy a twinkle of an eye get those problems solved. It will take a little time. Well, of course, there are people who may not be patient. There are people who may not be very patient with the pace of efforts we are putting up to solve such problems. Could you make it faster? Problems. Would it be, could it be faster than the pace you're going? There was always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. But as I said, don't judge us by what we've done so far, but where we were coming from, how the economy was messed up, how they, the city was fluctuating, the value that has gone down, the interest rate that was not high, corruption that was knee deep, uh, neck deep, with the persona of Ghana, uh, that almost become systematic. A lot of times people were lethargic and so forth. You need to take time to bring them. It's a human society. And so far, flagship of our policies, senior high school, nurses, and so forth and so on, that we've given their, their allowances, repairing what almost got damaged, talking about the NHIS and so forth, paying all the debt, making cocoa marketing board stable, increasing the output, fixing agriculture, a whole lot of things, irrigation and so forth in this country, we have to go through. Putting up industry, making sure that, and above all, we're in this country, do so that industry was almost given up, trying to stabilize the power fluctuation, and even making sure that somehow we contain the tariffs on electricity and so forth, so that business can have a British base and bring up the employment where people come because employment will not come from heaven. Yeah. We need to work at it and then make sure that there are jobs, creation and so that's what we believe in. These things take a little time. I understand it when people are a little impatient. But given time, when the results as they are turning out, when they come, 
when people start working, they will soon forget. But as a chairman, have you had reason to complain about the pace at which the government is going? Complain to myself or complain to... What, with the executives? We, this is government. That yeah. is, if we have collective responsibility. Our party has come to power and I'm as acting chairman. I take part of the responsibility. Right. We who have put together this government, we who are supporting the government, we who we believe those who have been putting up are working for us. The president is not working for himself. He's not working even for a party. He's working for Ghana. Mm. Definitely we will have preferred that uh, the problems will melt. Everything will go away. But there will be problems. There will be difficulties. We appreciate it. We even appreciate those who are complaining that we're not. Even those who are even now from the NDC complaining that, oh, you say some of us are corrupt. You are not prosecuted. We dare you to prosecute us. I feel sad. Why? It is not me as a lawyer. It's not my style. I'm a defensive lawyer. I prefer to defend people who are put before court. I'm not happy to see people put before court, even those who might have taken people other people's lives. Mm. What about those who now maybe have stolen a little money here and there, maybe big money, so for deprived this country of some resources that could have been used for progress and prosperity of this country. If many among them can now say, come and prosecute us, dare you to prosecute us, I feel sad. That's not the, what should, Ghana should be doing. That's not what NDC, I expect NDC members. But I understand sometimes it's an intra-party difficult, intra-party uh, uh, struggle. And some people would like to get rid of their own friends so that they will have leeway to manage the affairs of their party. But come to think of it, we are patient. We think we are together. Ghanaians are together. Mm. NDC, MPP, or all other parties. We must work together, put our hands together, work with each other to build this country. Okay. That's now, what I believe. When you say that NDC, NPP are together, uh, the, the position might fall to that statement because they seem to think that there is a deliberate attempt to remove officers and staff of state companies who for some reason were associated with their party. They talk about SEPs for instance where over 200 people have been uh, laid off and they say that they are, they are, uh, are known to be associates of the NDC. They, they give several examples. When you say that we are working together, what does it mean? My reaction. <coughs> In particular to the SEPs issue that you've raised. I'm even surprised. On the other hand, on the contrary, there are people amongst us, supporters of our party, they come and I mean, some people have come to complain. Mm. Indeed, I've been at meetings that we've gone to. Those who have been asked to, let's say, uh, to go home to so that they could be investigated and so forth. Many of them have contributed to, even in, in to your kind party. to our party. Okay. And yet they've been asked to sit down, sit, sit at home, to be investigated because they've been involved in, I like to have been involved in various uh, acts of, uh, uh, what I call it, indiscipline and name it. And therefore they have been investigated. If NDC turns around to say that those people, what they are, sympathizers as if I'm surprised that. But be it as it may, it was, I don't think people, they will go and ask people who have done nothing wrong, that go and sit home, mm. go home, and don't work. Many of them have agreed that they have been involved and they have been investigated. Me and I have gone through it. So the NDC so is just crying wolf? They, they are absolutely crying wolf. As I said, many of those involved may even be our party supporters, but then the law is blind when it comes to that. Mm. This country, the, and the ports, at the end, entry points and so forth, were leaking. The president, the day before yesterday, has mm -hmm. spoken that this country will make it or, 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 or not make it, depending on how 
those men in our ports, those in charge of uh, customs, and so forth and so on, behave, conduct themselves. Because a lot of what we can use for development, revenue that we can generate for development, come from, from them. Mm. And therefore, they must be up and coming. They must be honest and work for this country. And, because they must end their pay, yes. Mm -hmm. But what was happening in this country was uh, awful. We were taking a little money for themselves as individuals and allowing people to go even go away with better. Some case things that were bad and not be, need be, be imported into this country, they will allow them to import it and we will consume it. Um, tariff that they should pay, they are made to get away with it. Pay very little. They put it in their own pocket and Ghanaians suffer for it. Why we pay taxes? Why we get squeezed? When we don't have electricity? When we don't have enough work? When we can pay fees? When hospitals are empty and so forth and so on? We need to get out to work. And this we ask NDC members that we are all together because we, have, we don't have different markets for different parties. We all go to the same market. If you work for a government, we all get paid. And we are not targeting. I don't think MPP will target. We've always complained. That we are not targeting one party and leave the others. And therefore, we were not going to conduct ourselves like what they used to do in 2009, where they chased our workers away. Some of our members may even insist. That no, Is that not what your, your, your invisible forces are doing? No, they are not doing that. But some members have insisted, they've, they, they, they've complained, and loudly so sometimes, to President Bernardo Danko Akufuado and the leaders of our party and so forth, various fora. So then how, what that, do you say about that, the tax we're seeing? What they say is that, look, we have been, we were sacked from work. We were not even given the opportunity to take part in building this country so that we could also be paid monthly salaries to survive and to take care of our families. But they, you are allowing them to stay. You are not getting rid of them. What is happening? You are even comfortable dealing with them instead of dealing with us. Our membership have cried and the president has insisted, no, two wrongs will not make a right. We shouldn't do that. Unless, of course, such individuals are deliberately sabotaging and preventing government from achieving objectives and its goals, or sabotaging the programs of the government. Then, of course, they cannot be in the public service then, but that one should be proven. With evidence. So then, wh what is your reaction to all these attacks that have been one too many, um, either inv invisible forces locking up NHIS officers, uh, uh, locking up uh, school feeding program officers, they went to Adan recently, w what do you say about that? They're just marauding here and there. In fact, the NDC says that it is state-sponsored terrorism. That is what they accuse your, your, your party. It's a pity. One. It's been made amply clear that from the president down the, the line, Samia Wuku, John Bwadu, who are also not office holders of government, but even party, Star Wars, the president himself of Salad, is even ordered that the police should do their work. They don't need to. If you are Tada, and somebody has come to break through an office and looted or done anything which if you are complaining and you have the evidence that they meant that you don't need a permission please don't don't need the permission of the president of the republic before they can do their work but having said so it's exaggerated somehow sometimes i want to be honest with you in some cases you're taking time to go through to investigate to find out what is happening like the chimans like sisala where so is and all these things that have happened in some cases not true it's been exaggerated but people lock up let's say a dc i condemn it it's wrong it's indiscipline and we've advised our people that they shouldn't do that do they listen to you please i'm saying we've advised our people not to do that that if they do so the law will deal with them if us several occasions we've gone around the president are taking 
asked us to go around, we met the executives of our party, including those that you referred to as uh, forces, visible forces, because they are not everywhere in this country. Sometimes youth, sometimes even a party of, let's say, the chairman of our party in the constituency may have been involved in one or two some, some of these things. But as indiscipline, we are coming hard on them. We are advising them to stop, and we are also asking the law enforcers to enforce the law. But having said so, how many, how many of these things? We have 216 districts. Mm. 216. You've counted them on your figures, what you have heard, Adan, uh, Sisala, I've added Sisala, you've, uh, maybe you've added Techiban, and how many of them? In, when the NDC was in, ta in power, worse things happened. They didn't complain. Talked about vigilante group. Some of us were victims of vigilante attacks and uh, assault. Azoka, who was and this he was using what you call baranzine to beat people all over the place. Me attacked me. This is in uh, Talensi. Nothing was done. We complained. He is even he was chairman of the party in a region. It's what blessing. So they shouldn't cry, cry wolf. They shouldn't make it look like us. Shouldn't be on on, on top of the hills making it look like us. We are making hell break loose amongst us. We have let loose uh, 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 bad people into the country. Because that's what they that's say. They, they say that, the, 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 that it is not safe at the moment to be in this country. They say security has worsened in this country can as you, a result of the lack as, of firmness on the invincible force. Listen, I have said it. That what feminist you want for the government in power. The president of the republic have asked law enforcers, do your work. Can you if get you rid of please, the invincible please, forces? Please wait. If you don't do your work in any district, any jurisdiction, and it comes to even the interior minister said it quite recently. Yes. Comes to our notice, we will discipline you. And you are turning around and you say the visible for they are not carrying arms. I've not seen anybody being arrested among, assuming they are invisible, with arms. Please bear arms, bear weapons. And they are supposed to be, they have the law enforcement powers. And yet, they want to make it look like a bit about six or seven that might have been announced and have been exaggerated, particularly by, by the media, what is happening. It makes it look like there's lawlessness. The Fulani people and the other people in some other areas, They've been fighting and about nine people dead. And so for this being happening, people don't consider that this country is unsafe because of the full of the fight. In America, when a few things happen, people even take guns, go and shoot about 90 at a time. People are not running away from America. They don't say America is, is not safe. They stay there. And yet, when people come and lock a DC out, which I say, it, I will condemn it. It's wrong not to be there. And based on that, the media is saying the country is unsafe because the DC have not been beaten up, but it's been locked out of its office. Lockout sometimes happen, not among the vigilante people, but among ordinary Ghanaians, workers, and so forth. Sometimes they fall out of line and do some of these things. The police should be firm on them and so forth. But don't make it look like that if there are two, three armed robberies in this country, which has been happening since I was born, or since before you were born, it means Ghana. And it happens today. It's kind of out of control. That there's complete mayhem in this country. I think you are not being fair to, to our government. There is peace in this country. We are enforcing the laws. And a few things that has happened here and there, don't use that to judge and make Ghana look like a safe because of lockout. Not nothing much more. Lockout. Can your party it's get rid of invincible forces? It's not a question of the party getting rid of them. Maybe you don't understand what you mean by some of these people have There's a history behind what happened. Why the visible forces or some other uh, people that you may refer to as even vigilante. Mm. Before the election, earlier on, in 2000 and, 
and, and 12, and indeed 2008 even. The NDC people were extremely hard on us. They were violent in some cases, particularly 2012. And prior to 2016, we have complained about uh, Asutifi South. Colonel Dowder's brother, on radio, you kill people, beating our people in, in Brunner Half It was almost a no go area. I and uh, my general secretary visited Brunner Half Ward. We were told, we we're taken to some places that look, you, we can't campaign. And look at what is happening. We want to be, we are worried. People are literally hunting us out of our own country, and we, there's nothing we can do. If you don't do something, if you don't protect us, we will take the law into our own hands. It's not only that, in Bongafo, in Accra, elsewhere. And some of our people, we wanted to protect our people, defend them, and also, sometimes we are having meetings, we could not be sure about the role of the police, that the police, have, the police force has been politicized to the extent that they will rather come and in our headquarters, bring guns that made it look like as if we're keeping guns over there. So we have to rely on our own people. But Some now you're in our, power. Now wait on our own people. So we gather them, form a line of defense at meetings and at rallies, they protect and bring discipline. It means we don't just pick here and there. They came together. So they stayed a little. But they are melting away over time. So if a few of them here and there call themselves, something happened in Cape Coast, people call themselves invisible. Some call themselves crocodile and so forth. It's a name that they've given themselves and, and therefore they made themselves like the defensive forces around our party. But tell me, from your experience, I believe you've been in this game for a long time. From your experience, where have the invisible forces or some of these people that are referring to have beaten, have assaulted, wounded, hurt people in this country? Nowhere. An example is given of the security coordinator in the Ashanti region. The security coordinator was not beaten. He was descending the stairs. We were together. Or we watched it. We even brought those who were involved to Accra. Disciplined them on our own. And they were, they were referred to, uh, by the, to be taken care of by the police. Please put them on. Of course, all that things happened subsequently were still before court for trial. They were still before court, but they didn't hurt the man. They didn't share blood. They didn't assault anybody. Some say that the police just got there in time. Well, I'm saying, did there, was there any blood shed? Did they hurt anybody? Did they beat anybody? Nothing of the sort happened. But that is not to say even threatening some, to slap somebody is not a good thing. Even showing somebody that if he doesn't move, you beat him up. I don't endorse it. And our party does not endorse it. We are trying to, as it were, to enforce that kind of discipline. And please sympathize with us that we are doing the best we can. I'm talking to the acting chairman of the new patriotic party, Mr. Freddie Blay. This is State of Affairs. We'll be back in a bit. <laughs> Is he checking you out? Weren't you when I came out? But I am your husband. And he's my fan. The best part is unlike you, my dear. This is a Binaton fan. And its performance is warranted for two years. Binaton products now come with a two-year warranty. No worries.
Welcome to Solatech, the number one manufacturer of innovative products in power protection. Solatech Fridge Guard. Solatech Fridge Guard protects fridges against low voltage, spikes, and power back surges, which can damage any refrigeration appliances compressor. It is ideal for fridges, domestic freezers, and water dispensers up to 6 amps. It disconnects the power when the voltage goes below unacceptable level and has a delay of 3 minutes to prevent massive surge experienced when power returns after power cut. Remember, stay original by Solatech. For more information, please visit www.solatechghana.com.gh. Solatech, the power to protect. to State of Affairs. My guest tonight is the acting chairman of the new patriotic party, Mr. Freddie Blay. Now, I want to talk about Otiko Jabba and the Northern Regional Chairman of your party. What exactly? <laughs> <laughs> there, there are feuds. There was a group that was warning uh, Mr. Bugri to stop disturbing Otiko because they feel Otiko is doing the right things uh, for the school feeding program. You've not read it. I'm okay. Ready. But there are problems between the two of them. Well, there had been uh, some kind of problem. I, I can't deny that there had been a little misunderstanding earlier. That was a, a number of months ago. But I thought that one had been sorted out. It's still simmering. Maybe. I'm not aware. But as of yesterday, I'm being very honest with you, I've not heard. But I'm told this morning that there, there was some kind of, uh, there were some kind of exchanges between supporters, apparent or alleged supporters of uh, Otiku uh, Jaba, Madame Otiku Jaba, and uh, as against uh, the original chairman of our party. Mm -hmm. But this is an intra-party difference, unfortunately, because uh, it involves not a member of the party or members of the party, but a chairman and then, of course, a, 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 a minister of state or a, a cabinet minister. Uh, it's unfortunate, but well, once a while, such chorus will come up. All I've got to do is to make a force of solemn so that it doesn't affect the conduct of business for government. But I don't think you that's see a lot of these problems coming up. I wouldn't say that I would see a lot of problems, such problems coming up, but I can't rule out that some of such problems. Personality differences will come out. No, people may be fighting for territory and so forth. Oh, it could be disagreement of our modus of operandi if they come together. Oh, you may not like me and I may not like you. It's unfortunate, but these things are part of uh, our society particularly uh, in our part of the world i don't need to like you to work with you but sometimes we may clash mm. who knows yeah uh, okay. so I, I i don't find anything particularly wrong with that but i wish it, it had not happened okay can we talk about mr e. sibwating now um, the the former president. You asked the questions, and I'll answer. <laughs> the former president was in Cape Coast recently, and uh, uh, described his apology as an apology. 
uh, an apology yes Why not? an apology an, an apology of an apology yes, yes. there are so many people who have called for his head um, including the minority in Parliament um, have you had reason to speak to him and what do you make of the comments he made uh, I was not too sure whether he was still around I'm told that he was when he came and he's been my friend so please uh, let me warn you let me put you on notice that I see what has been a very good friend mm. indeed he was my chief campaigner in the Ashanti region right. went around all and said very nice gentleman extremely understanding and uh, but he speaks his mind and sometimes uh, strongly so were his comments nice I as I speak with you now I can't be sure because I'm told that I've, I've heard it on the radio mm -hmm. he denied s some parts of the comment that people have ascribed to him to have said for example, he never said that MPP people are more human beings or more Ghanaians than other people and so forth. He's denied it. I'm not there. I wasn't there and I wouldn't be in a position to say he said this or said that. But definitely it could have been a better way of putting some of these things. But as I said, I've been asked this question. I've said he was speaking to party supporters. It's almost like a rally of some sort and therefore I'll put it within a contest mm. and I never thought that maybe or he never imagined that there would be other people and so forth around and when he says that I'll put you uh, I'll put you I, I will uh, I will not discriminate but I will recognize my you among my own people say all kinds of things of that this it's an unwritten law when you say it sometimes it means maybe you never realize that it's not public you shouldn't say such things publicly so the best way to put it but i don't think he meant it i've seen online uh, he would uh, ndc people i've seen him he's also said that uh, honorable et mensah visited him he's been so receptive he's been so nice to him that him, he doesn't discriminate against Ghanaians. That's against the impression that people are seeking to and for that reason which people are calling for his blood. I say, why? My former president, my very good friend, John Mahama, in a very bad context, whatever, whether, what do you call it, whether it's, it's, it's a figuratively or so, if you call Ghanaians, I call some of us pigs. It means he's referred to me as rabbit. All kinds of names. I have ignored it. We've not called that it's some presidential and so forth and so on. We take it in our sight as part of the game. In some places, it's called Ghanaians, and they speak Baloney. He said all these things. I'm talking about him. I'm not talking about the others. You can talk about them in but legend. But we don't have to take it so seriously. I don't think we Ghanaians treat ourselves very nicely. I think irrespective of our differences, we meet elsewhere. I've been in parliament for 12 years. I've come together with NDC members or other people, other people belonging to several other parties. We may disagree here in Ghana. In some cases, we quarrel even and, f and insult ourselves on the floor of parliament. We move outside Ghana, we are together. We help each other, like as if we are brothers and sisters. So I don't think people are justified in selling each other. It's, it's, it's all mischief, it's all politics. They are making, they are raising the politics to that standard. So people he, don't have much to talk about. They should talk about bread and butter now. They should talk about.